I was deciding what to wear for today, and I thought maybe I should wear something that looks like my photo. <laughs> so peace be upon all of you. Uh, I'm Ibnor from the Sustainable Living Lab, or SL Square. Uh, in, in Singapore, we're very grateful for whatever little we have, and I'm really grateful for this little opportunity to share what little I know about why we need to change the way we innovate. Or in other words, why we need to change the way we make change. I love Singapore for it's a country that grows so fast. We have grew in many leaps and bounds in terms of our technology, hardware, and software. And we are quickly becoming a model of progress for many countries. But really, what is progress? Our late former Deputy Prime Minister, S. Rajaratnam, warned us about money theism, the worshipping of material wealth and money. And so have countless many wise men, prophets, and messengers in your respective religious tradition. He warned Singapore not to be a nation of people who know the price of everything, but know the value of nothing. I believe we're in danger, because nowadays I realize that most of us seem to see everything in terms of money. The person's worth is dependent on how much he or she earns, the clothes he wears, or maybe the phone that one has. We are living in a highly paradoxical world. And for the geeks of you out there, uh, like me, I like equations. And this is one very important equation to me. I call it the going bananas equation. Yep. We spend billions of dollars on technologies, and we've said so many things and made billions of promises to save the world from poverty and inequality, but yet a billion, of peop a billion people we couldn't save from hunger. And this makes me go crazy, or in another word, make me go bananas. We are well informed of the consequences of neglecting our environment, destroying nature, yet we continue to sit in our air-conditioned rooms, uh, not wanting to get out there, not wanting to get our hands dirty, not wanting to walk the ground. And how then can we make change? We live in a highly connected world with internet and air transport and have hundreds or some of you maybe have thousands of Facebook friends, but really, how many amongst your friends you have really connected with? Are we not getting more disconnected from reality and nature? And we are all rapidly urbanizing. More farmers are leaving the villages to live in cities. And by 2050, it is expected that 70% of the world's population will be living in cities. Who then will grow our food? Gandhi said, happiness is when what you think and what you say and what you do are all in harmony. And that is exactly why my friend, Tay Lai Hock, set up an organization called Ground Up Initiative to build the Sustainable Living Kampong, or in the local language means village, right in the middle of 100% urban Singapore. From scratch, no money, no land, and no governmental support. He founded GUI, on Earth Day, 22nd April 2008. His main purpose is to connect people to each other and to connect people with the land, and in so doing, healing the earth and healing the human spirit. So every weekend, he brings urbanites uh, who live in the city, who live in tall buildings, to come back to the ground and work on the soil uh, and start connecting with each other, get connected not via Facebook, but face to face get back to basics, and learn about humility. And interestingly, I learned that the word humility and the word human comes from the word humus, which means soil. And if you've watched uh, WALL-E, the movie, uh, the first two things that the robot did was first to manage the waste, and then to find the plant so as to save the planet and save the human civilization. And similarly, at the kampong or at the village, we start from farming and managing our waste. And hopefully one day, our village could save our city. As more join the village, 
the village grew to 1,200 square meters from nothing initially. And then the kampong grew beyond farming to cooking, to carpentry, to games, engineering, and then to the arts. And I grew up playing games like Sid Meier's Civilization games, and to me, Lihok was essentially building a prototype for a sustainable civilization. So this is the SL Kampong from the outside. So as Lihok was actually building up the SL Kampong, I was fortunate to actually be in Silicon Valley. And I was actually studying at Stanford for a year, and working for a mobile payments company, which later was bought over by uh, eBay. And over there, I got immersed in the garage innovation culture. And then after a year, I went back to Singapore to complete my studies. And then just before I graduate as a nanotechnology major, I received an email. Hey, Ibnor, any chance you may be interested to work at Google? Wow. Isn't that a dream job? <laughs> and then I decided that I wanted to start the hands-on DIY culture in Singapore. And hence, my reply was, glad that you had me in mind to join Google, but I wanted to start a startup. And I've always been into DIY, innovation, experimentation, and creativity since young. When I was 15 years old, I was actually playing with lasers. And I actually invented together with my professor a novel interferometer, and later on it was actually published in an international photonics journal. So initially it was just for fun, but interestingly they actually published it. And then later on, two years later, I published about water desalination, and I also started exploring beyond science and engineering, I started exploring the arts. So I played the French horn in the orchestra, I wrote scripts, I also painted banners. And then, like all Singaporean guys, we have to go through the national service. And when I was there, I led a platoon, uh, a band of brothers. And then later on, I was upgraded and I led a company of heroes. And interestingly, I'm the youngest and the smallest in, amongst all the soldiers. <laughs> and then later on, as, as I entered university, I started to travel to various uh, socially disadvantaged communities around Asia. Indonesia, India, Cambodia, Vietnam. And my team collaborated with a university uh, in India, Mumbai University. And what we did was we transferred the solar pond technology from Israel to a rural farm location in India. And thankfully, we were given the UNESCO Mondial Logo Engineering Award. And my professor and I later worked on something called 3D metamaterials. Uh, for some of you who know, it's actually the precursor for the invisibility cloak, which is what Harry Potter was trying to wear <laughs> in, in throughout the movies. And then just before I was about to graduate, reality caught me by the neck. And it was a very simple question. What is really the world's largest social network? Maybe a show of hands, who thinks it's Google Plus? <laughs> Twitter, maybe Twitter? Facebook? Hmm. But to my horror, it's actually organized crime. <laughs> it's, a, it's a highly integrated network uh, worth $2 trillion. And I was wondering to myself, why must the world's largest social network be one that destroys lives, livelihoods, living ecosystems, perpetuating the global poverty. Instead of overly criticizing them, I thought maybe I apply a bit of appreciative inquiry and start to ask, why, what, what, what did they do right? They must have done something right. And then I realized that they did five things right. And according to Mark uh, Goodman, founder of the Future Crimes Institute, criminals study news and trends. So when there's a tsunami or disaster going to strike, they will send fraudulent email SMSs to you guys in the hope that you will actually donate to their fraudulent accounts. And what they also do is they outsource to specialists and knowledge experts. They understand very well that cash isn't the only incentive. 
they know that all of you have your own passion. Some of you have the want the thrill to break laws. I know some of you want recognition. Some of you want to bash your competitors. So criminals make use of this. They also know that billions of small acts add up to major impact. And most importantly, they collaborate across borders. So essentially, they manage to innovate from the ground up without any given authority from the government. In fact, they were against the government. So we need to start rethinking about our ways to fight poverty. There are many successful open systems such as Mozilla Firefox, Linux, and Wikipedia. And that's why I started the Sustainable Living Lab, or SL Square. It's a community lab in the Kampong, but are we going to simply follow what the criminals are doing? We have to dig deeper. We have to go beyond innovation, beyond intuition, to intention. So, Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, in, in namal amal biniyat, or in English, indeed, all our actions are based on our intentions. So in our, in our Kampong community, we look at three core values, the first of which is be the change. Second, do not take things for granted. And lastly, always express gratitude. And our innovators, our grown-up innovators, they walk the talk, they are very hands-on, and they focus lots about less on me, but more on the we. So this is actually a project together with Starbucks where we converted their coffee grounds into valuable compost for a community farming project. And later on, we went to Cambodia uh, with Lighthouse Orphanage. We actually created a composting shed with them. And then we experimented with various ways to plant food during floods. So this is a, we, we collected discarded PET water bottles and we make floating farm modules to grow food. And one of, a friend of mine, Chris, he actually started a, a, an environmental leadership camp where we teach students how to make their own filters out of PET bottles from scratch. And he's actually now leading a team to work on a very cool project called Farming Journey, which is essentially a real-life Farmville game. Yeah. <laughs> Virapan, my co-founder, he's actually leading another team to develop a very cool product called the iBAM. It's an awesome bamboo speaker that amplifies your music without any electronic parts. <laughs> yeah, if you want to find out more, you can check on our Facebook. We're actually launching iBAM 2 very soon. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's actually half the size, but double the sound. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And then after that, we receive a call from a commander from a fire station. He has so, much, uh, so many condemned fire hoses, and he challenged my team. Can you give a second life to these fire hoses? So our team got together, and we came up with a fired-up keychain. This keychain looks very simple, but it means a lot to us because the components are stitched by single parents, elderly micro-enterprises, cut very carefully by ex-offenders and at-risk youth, and packed neatly by the mentally disabled persons. And we pay them close to 10 times higher than market rate. And more than 60% of our sales go back to strengthening these communities. And ever since 2008, we have impacted at least 19,969 persons and growing by the week, we have impacted two, close to 2,000 kids, 3,000 youth, 12,000 young adults, and close to 3,000 seniors. So what's next for us? Innovation is difficult without knowledge. And according to Professor Said Nakib Alatas, knowledge is the arrival of meaning to the soul or the arrival of the soul to the meaning of things. And we're very familiar with hardware and software crunching data and information but we've neglected our soul, the hardware that makes knowledge and wisdom possible. Hence, the community is now embarking on one of the grandest experiments, if not the most, 
and the craziest educational enterprise, to say the least, to start building up brick by brick from the ground up to give Singapore a soul, the Singapore Open University of Life, a village campus focused on humanitarian training, sustainability, and most importantly, nurturing grounded leaders. To be leaders who think, do, and feel, to be leaders who are thinkers, warriors, and farmers. And our late farm, former Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. To Chin Chai, said that robots and computers can be programmed, or if you like, can be trained. But the trouble, of course, is that computers lack soul. And what we need in Singapore is soul, because it is soul that makes society. And let's come together and create the sustainable future via the 21st century Kampong culture. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.